You better uh, like hey, and subscribe. I wonder why I subscribe uploaded this channel now. to my main for once. You know, I've been thinking for like the longest time. I used to be a commentator, like talk about drama every week, upload something ranting about a topic online, and I did it without trend hopping, so I never really went anywhere. Then I realized how much I hated trend hopping. Then I realized how much I wanted to be a normal YouTuber who just uploaded funny moment and gameplay stuff and just kind of stepped away from it. It also didn't help that I was more of a stubborn child at the time. Even if I was a grown adult, I didn't really act like a grown adult. And it made me wonder if I should be in that space because every time someone would criticize me, I'd have this overwhelming feeling to just go after them and do something about it. And then, you know, false accusations started happening and then more drama. And then there was the big kahuna, the big one hit KO. And I just had to step away from that community, man. It was just too much. But that was like almost three years ago at this point in time. And I gotta realize that stuff's not going away, but there's a good select part of my audience who knows that a lot of it was a hoax and I never realized why did I step away from this side of the community. I'd be lying if I said I didn't consume this type of content. I mean, I watch Bo Blacks 24 seven. I stay on top of drama just for the shits and giggles. And I just maybe thought that because it was giving my opinion on topics, maybe, just maybe, it wouldn't really matter. And then I realized, why would it matter? If I want to make content on this kind of stuff, I should make content on this kind of stuff. It just doesn't belong with my normal content anymore. Because let's face it, I'm doing good numbers on my main channel, and it's solely focused on my main channel, so my second channel is practically fucking dead. And... I, d I just didn't know where to go from there. But then I realized, I don't care. Sometimes I want to sit down and just say a bunch of shit over some stupid gameplay in the background, and who's gonna fucking stop me? Who's gonna make me stop? Nobody. It's just me fucking around and finding out. So yeah, uh, I guess this is me saying that I might do more content like this. It's probably not gonna do as good as my main channel, my main channel's content or anything like that, because I'm not a drama YouTuber anymore, and if I do talk about drama, I really couldn't care half the time. It's not like I'm personally invested unless it's something I feel strongly for. And on that note, I'll make sure to mention that I feel very strongly for it. But I also have this tendency where I don't want to seem like a hypocrite because I am human. I'm not going to act like I don't get mad at certain things or I haven't been an asshole in the past. It's just not part of my brand to be a liar and a deceiver to those that avidly support me. So I guess if you do enjoy content on the second channel, then sure, I might upload more of the kind of stuff like this. I mean, I've got plenty to talk about. There's always something new on the internet to fucking bother people over, so why the fuck not? But I also have this tendency where I don't want to seem like a hypocrite, because I am human. I'm not going to act like I don't get mad at certain things, or I haven't been an asshole in the past. It's just not part of my brand to be a liar and a deceiver to those that avidly support me. So I guess if you do enjoy content on the second channel, then sure, I might upload more of the kind of stuff like this. I mean, I've got plenty to talk about. There's always something new on the internet to fucking bother people over, so why the fuck not? I, I will make one official statement, though. I don't want to be lumped in with every other commentary channel or think that this is for profit or for gain or anything. If anything, if I wanted it to be profitable, I'd start uploading it to my main channel. I'm not going to do that because it doesn't belong with my other content. If anything, the second channel is not even monetized and they don't reflect the views of any goons or anybody associated with me or my friends. I'm allowed to have my own opinions because I'm a grown adult and just because people work with me doesn't mean they feel the same way and that is completely okay. I guess I'll use the rest of this video to just kind of give you guys an up to date. I don't really feel like I've talked to my my actual audience in a while and it's weird to say that knowing that I actually have an audience of people that care about me and a friend group that still cares about me despite everything we've been through because I'll be honest with you we've been through a lot I've been on this platform for almost seven years do you guys understand how long seven years is dedicated to content no breaks nothing it's a very long time and it's I don't even have the energy to quit I, I don't feel like I'm burnt out it feels like I'm just now starting to achieve peak. It feels like I'm still going to go further and there's still more for me to do and I'm honestly excited for that. It keeps me up. It gets me up in the morning. It's literally my entire livelihood. As you guys know, I run the main channel, uh, Striker and the Goons. It's been like that for a while. Our content is at its peak and it hopefully it just keeps getting better. I also run the Goons and Goblins manga, which is what this channel is named after. It's my second channel and it hopefully just kind of stays that way. Uh, the manga itself, it's actually taking a very long time to get out. I personally have written 
written about maybe almost 30 chapters, but getting them digitalized is harder than you think because we're a volunteer project. Meaning that anybody that's on board, they're here of their own volition, and they enjoy what they do. The moment they stop, they are free to quit, they go, it's fine. You know, it's the normal day-to-day -day basis. Hopefully making commentary videos on my second channel isn't going to spark any controversy. I'm not even sure if I want to engage with the community on my second channel. I just feel like it's a good place for me to have opinions and talk about stuff that I feel needs to be talked about. By all means, however, I'm not going to take full credit for this. If anything, I've been more inspired by channels like Hero Hey and Rev Says Desu to talk about topics that might not be as heavy hitting but still need to be talked about. Yeah, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm joining the Twitter cesspool and talking about things that need to be talked about on Twitter because they're so absurd or ridiculous, you can't help but be upset or think about it just a little bit, you know? One thing I'd love to cover recently was the Silvervale and Pikami drama where they're trying to play Hogwarts Legacy and the entire internet decided, hey, let's go beat them up. I know I say the entire internet, but I mean a select few of delusional people on Twitter who really just need to go outside or something. And keep in mind, this is in no way a hate speech against anybody that's going after them, because the crowd of people that are targeting them are most likely trans activists and trans allies, which there's nothing wrong with being. Because keep in mind, I'll literally work with anybody. I'll work with anybody of any color, any gender, any sexuality. I don't really care as long as they're not in my face about it and it's not annoying. And seeing people like that make the trans community look worse than it already does in the public eye, it's just rather upsetting. because because they get a lot more shit than they actually deserve. To retell what actually happened, Pikami decided to try to play it, she got a bunch of backlash, then she disappeared, she's still gone, nobody knows where she was. People were pretending that she reformed herself and learned from her mistake. No, she got bullied off of Twitter, bullied off of her Twitch, and now we're all sick and worried if she's actually going to be coming back to the internet at all, because if it happened to me, like that, and I was bullied that much as a child, and still expected to make content for a VTuber agency, I probably would have graduated on the spot. Pikami is not like me. Pikami is a caring, kind individual who rationally thinks through how other people are going to feel. She was so invested in American culture that she learned to speak English and started appealing to an American audience just for the hell of it. She didn't have to learn to speak English at all. She chose to speak English and still came back, but honestly, she still got bullied for it and it's just so sad to see that kind of stuff happen. But that stuff was nothing compared to the Silvervale controversy because she decided to play the game and there was some kind of automatic moderation in her chat and stuff because people were spamming it in her Discord too, where it banned the word trans. People were getting upset. Now, I know that she didn't ban it. She addressed that she didn't ban it. But even if she did, who could blame her? Banning the word trans does not actively make you a TERF or whatever you want to call it, a, tr a transphobe, or whatever were they referring to people as nowadays, I really don't know, because I couldn't really care. I think banning the word trans means that you don't want to talk about anything political in your chat. Then again, being trans shouldn't be political in the first place, but sadly, that's the kind of world we live in. If she wants to ban it from her chat, she can ban it from her chat without being transphobic. And then the worst of it, you had people going out of their way to at other members of V Shoujo or V Shoujo saying that she should ban, they should ban, somebody should ban Silvervale. Not only her, but they should ban Fruit too because Fruit was also being an activist for the trans community because she has a 14 year old brother who's also a transgender. First off, adding other members of V Shoujo or Zentrea or anybody that's not even remotely involved with the drama shouldn't be a thing. Second off, if Fruit wants to support her younger brother in being trans, by all means, let them let them support their younger sibling. Do I think they should be making choices like that at a young age? No. Are they going to make that choice anyway because they're a teenager who doesn't know any better and they'll have to learn the hard way whether they actually want to be trans or not? Yes. I hate to face it for a lot of you, but not everybody that becomes trans wants to stay trans. In fact, a lot of people end up regretting the decision later. But that's not our choice to make. That's their choice to make. Because it's their community, their sexuality, it's how they feel. It's not something they can control. According to the Ye old Book of Testament, it's a psychological disease. Nowadays, we don't treat it like a disease because the word disease has a negative connotation and makes people feel bad. If you don't know, the disease is called gender dysphoria. It's where you are one gender and feel like the other. And let's be honest here, unless you have it, you're probably not going to want to feel that. You're probably not going to understand how that feels. But it's a very serious thing, and how you treat it is up to the person and how they want to deal with it. Some people got to understand topics like that do just, they just don't spark joy. 
People get angry when they do not understand something, and that is completely okay. And I feel like that's what's on so both sides of the argument here. People can't understand why Silvervale would go out of her way to play a game despite it quote-unquote hurting the trans community. I don't see how it is. I don't know anybody that says it's hurting them. But by all means, if it's hurting them, then they're free to avoid that content. However, harassing people on the internet's not exactly something that's very good to do these days. I mean, I can literally vouch for you on that. The only place I can actively troll anymore without pissing somebody off is Gmod, and people still get mad on there. Sometimes you gotta sit back and ask yourself, is this really all worth getting mad for? And I wish that a lot more people would do that before spouting off really shitty opinions on Twitter, because you're just gonna get made fun of at that point. And then you've got people that have the audacity you'd be like, well, what did Silvervale expect? She was said she should have expected to get harassed. I mean, she's playing the funny wizard game. Did you expect to have your entire community being bad-mouthed and harassed and genuinely being hated upon because you're acting that way? I mean, genuinely, sit down and think to yourself, do you think any of the people that were making these comments on Twitter and talking about it the way they did genuinely sat down and thought to themselves, hey, you know, me being hateful towards the general public and Silvervale's community, I wonder if there's going to be any backlash from that. I wonder if it's going to make the trans community look bad for blatantly attacking somebody for just enjoying what they want. Want to enjoy. Like, you genuinely gotta ask yourself, am I gonna get backlash for having a shitty take on Twitter that most people aren't agreeing with? Yes, that is how the internet works. They don't care about right and wrong. They don't care about left and right. There are very few people that actually genuinely care about the facts of the situation and would rather get mad and angry at you. You should expect this kind of behavior because when everybody has an opinion, nobody's opinion matters. When everybody starts thinking for themselves and not for the people around them, Nobody's going to actually go out and fact check most of this stuff. They'll just say whatever, and then idiots will fall for it. That is literally how the misinformation that she was banning it in her server and on Discord spread in the first place. Somebody woke up one day, saw that it, they couldn't type it in the chat like, well, time for me to spread misinformation online, and then you made the girl cry on stream. I'm sorry, I don't care how much money she's making, how big her titties are, how sexualized or goofy, or how much of a porn star she is, no one deserves to be forced to cry on stream. And everybody acted like it was crocodile tears. You could hear the pain and sorrow in that woman's voice, because all she wanted to do was play the wizard game, and you guys were like, well, time to send her death threats and dox her friends. Oh joy! That definitely makes your community look great. And the worst part is, you know it's awful when Iron Mouse has to step in because her friend is getting harassed and nobody else wants to say anything? Like, I understand. The Shoujo members, they are there to make content, they're not there for drama, so if nobody else wanted to step in, that's fine. But somebody, please help the poor girl. I mean, she's literally being reduced to tears because she decided to go, Harry Potter, did you throw your fucking gender into the goblet of fire? But yeah, that basically summarizes the internet for this week. I really don't see there being an end to it anytime soon, no matter how you see it. Three months from now, a year from now, you're still gonna have people calling her a transphobic piece of shit just because she wanted to stream the wizard game and she didn't care how you felt on Twitter. That's just the thing about Twitter drama. It's like a car wreck. You can't really just look away. You really just want to go up and just grab some popcorn and watch no matter how many people are screaming and crying in the comments. But hey, at least Silvervale's not falsely striking people. Speaking of which, let's talk about Ninji Sanji. Or her Ninji Sanji. Or Nidagahagi. Nanju Sensai. I don't know how to pronounce the fucking name. If you haven't noticed, I really only talk about VTuber stuff due to the fact that I'm a VTuber. Oh boy, that can only end well. I'm totally not gonna get any hate because I'm an anime boy. I'm an anime boy doing anime things. I sure hope nobody comes and sends me a death threat on Twitter or anything. If I had to define to you what Niji Sanji was in like a few words, I'd say, oh, that's just Hololive, but less restrictions. But then I realized maybe Hololive has the restrictions for their idols and talents for a reason. Because it feels like sometimes the people in Niji Sanji just don't get it. They're not as entertaining as they should be. They're either a thirst trap with a parasocial audience, or they're just not as entertaining to me. There's a very select few that I quite enjoy. There's Millie Parfait. Uh, I can't remember the name of her, but it's the dragon with the wings on her head. She's pretty funny. Most of the girls over there, pretty talented. And I want to say that a lot of them try their best, and I don't want to diss on the talents, because some of them I just can't get around to watching. I don't have that much time. The main issue is their parent company is striking YouTubers and news channels that seem to be wholesomely unbiased. Like, they just really enjoy their content and report on the news. That's all they really do. There's one that I think his name was, like, Kyo. He's like a fucking sheep rabbit thing. He reports on the news. 
news. I don't watch him, but I used to, and I can say he's pretty much unbiased. He's just not as entertaining to me as the other one. Now, the other channel is named False Eyed. False Eyed is probably one of the best channels for VTuber news. He reports on Indie, he reports on Hololive, he reports on Niji Sanji, or at least he did, until they started falsely striking down his content for featuring their talents in the thumbnails. What is with YouTubers and abusing the copyright system? Earlier this week, it was Brent Rivera on a commentary video. Now, it's Niji Sanji against any news channel that dare speak out against them. I'm sorry, Master. I didn't mean to speak out bad against you, Master. Please don't strike my channel and take my livelihood away. I'm tired. The way I see it, there's no way it's not going to get resolved. I mean, those two channels, Kiyom and Fallside, I'm sorry if I get his name wrong. I really didn't look it up before doing this. Remember, these videos are unscripted. This is straight off the top of my head. But speaking of my head, I don't need a giant galaxy brain to tell you that they're falsely striking these channels. You have to learn and vouch for me because I can't show you the videos they struck. But Fallside and Kiyom, I'm like, once again, sorry if I got his name wrong, they're 100% unbiased. They just go in, they tell the news, and they give us the news. I watch Fallside preferably, but Kion's a good content creator. He works really hard for what he has. And these content creators are unbiased. They're fair news sources. So if you take these YouTubers off the internet, you're not only falsely striking them for doing what they love and enjoying your content and reporting on it, you're also depriving the rest of us of a fair and balanced news source that we need access to. Do you really know how many channels report on VTuber news that I can genuinely go to? Because I can name them on my two fingers, Kiyom and Fallside. They're literally the only ones. I mean, yes, there's probably other VTubers out there that report on drama and news, but not like Fallside and Kiyom. They're not, like, reputable. They're smaller sources. I cannot vouch for the validity of everything they say, nor have I been recommended their content. But by all means, if anybody sees this and knows any other VTubers that report on the news as good as Fallside does, please recommend them below. I would love to give them a watch to make sure that, that just in case Fallside gets striked, there's another news source to have. And granted, there's also news channels like uh, Rev Says Desu and Hirohei, but they're more geared towards what, like, uh, what I'm talking about right now, where it's commentary about drama and stuff. It's not the news. It's not everything you need to know. It's more like selectively telling us the news, and then there's sometimes posts about blasting delusional people on Twitter, and it's hilarious, but it's not news. It's just informing me on some current events and then giving opinions, which, don't get me wrong, it's entertaining. I love Rev Says Desu, I love Hirohei, but it's just not the same, you know? But yeah, uh, it's an ongoing situation. I can't tell you how it's gonna turn out, but hopefully by the time this video goes up, it'll get fixed and this news is outdated. But um, yeah, that was me testing to see if I still got the commentary game in me, and I, I wanna say I kinda do. I feel like I really Really put this video well together everything was well thought out and talked about and if you guys enjoyed this kind of content then maybe I'll post more I'll be happy if anybody enjoys it honestly it's just something that just kind of exists now but I'm glad to be back I'm glad I have the energy and the know-how to still do this thing and I guess I'll see you guys in a future video if you enjoyed this like subscribe comment and I'll see you guys in the next installment I'm a tear off your flesh